Good afternoon, dear friends, and we're back on Q&A with Uncle J, episode number five. Today we have a great guest, all the way from Malmo, Kotada Yonus. Thank How you. are you, brother? How I'm was your trip fine. here? Was nice. I can uh, see it in your eyes, you're pretty tired today. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning to make some production for a client of us, and we worked from 8 to 12, so I'm a little bit tired, yes, sorry for that. Uh, absolutely fine, I understand, and it is four o'clock in the evening, so. Yeah, it is, when time went very fast. Yeah, it does, here in Stockholm, you know, busy place. Yeah, yeah, it is actually, it is. Uh, Kotada here, he has the biggest platform, Arabic platform in Sweden. That's why we're, we've been working for a while now together and it was very interesting to hear his story and ask different questions. And I didn't have a chance to promote you to my uh, viewers and take their questions, but I believe I have my questions of my own, which they would be pretty interested in. And you, you've come from Syria, right? How many yeah. years have you been in Sweden so far? So I have been uh, six years living in Sweden. And uh, before that, I lived one year in Denmark. Mm -hmm. And before that, I lived a little bit in uh, Lebanon, Beirut. All right. And I run this uh, media platform that targets the Arabic community in Sweden. It's for, it's for not just like the new arrivals, it's also for the people who have been in Sweden for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So we basically spread Swedish news in Arabic. Okay. And we have 300,000 readers with 5.2 million engagement on social media, which allow us to have companies to promote their serv services for mm -hmm. this um, targeted groups. So our business model is companies want to reach this growing group mm -hmm. uh, and they can promote their services, their products, of course the good services and good products because we don't accept any company to work with us. And uh, do you know that the Arabic community is the biggest community in Sweden after Swedish? No, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's a second language used in Sweden. Wow. So it's, it's Swedish, then Arabic, then Finland. Finnish. Finnish yeah. So Finnish used to be the biggest for the past 100 years. Wow. Mm. And it's still growing, right? Yeah, it's still growing. And I think it will formally 10% of the Swedish society in some years. The Arabic 10%. community, yeah. Wow. There will be 10% in some years. S soon, like not so far away in the future. But you started up in Malmo. Yeah, I started up in Malmo. And now we are in all over Sweden. And... Uh, we sit here at Abbey Centers, Christina yeah. sit here. And exactly, because you now have offices in Stockholm, Malmo, yeah. and you're planning to expand as well, right? Or We're planning to expand to the Nordics and Germany, mm -hmm. uh, but that yet a discussion with some investors. All right. Mm -hmm. So your platform basically engages all uh, Arabic community, and uh, more is or less it all, yeah. Is it only news, or is it anything that could actually so interest people? The daily stuff is the news. Mm -hmm. And the night, like what we translate and create from different news outlets here in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Like we take news from Swedish TV, we take news from Afton Bladet, we take right. news from Dagens Nyheter. Mm -hmm. And then we recreated them and we published them in Arabic. And that's daily. But our real work is not just about the news, it's about the information. So we basically spread with our partners. Uh, health information, mm -hmm. law information. We spread uh, about about environment, about sustainability, about so how the Arabic community can navigate mm -hmm. the Swedish society through art, culture, health, okay. business, entrepreneur. That's what we wanted to do with Abbey Center to attract uh, young entrepreneur mm -hmm. from the Arabic speaking community to start and run their business here in Sweden. So that's what we actually that what we do our own is spreading information and help people navigate the mm -hmm. Swedish society. And the news is another thing. The news is just the daily news that we attract actually readers and engagement to come to our website. So you basically redo the news completely yeah. in Arabic language? We redo them completely in Arabic language, yes. And we, uh, is it only like text or do you have videos? Uh, we have a web TV. We used to be a printed newspaper three years ago. Mm -hmm. And we stopped printing one and a half year ago. All right. And we do a lot of texts and we do a lot of videos. Okay. Yeah. And videos, are they, for example, if you uh, get some news that you want to redo on Arabic language, do you have to have a permission to actually redo them in Arabic and put it on your platform? Or is it okay just to get the video and redo it and send it? Uh, you can't just take the video. There are the rules. Yeah. So, uh, so for example, you can only use from the video 13 seconds. Okay. 
or from less any video. yeah from a video but then you have to mention the source so we can't use the whole video uh -huh. so as we actually take the story and we make our own video sometimes we send the journalist to take some footage for that video or we make our own or we buy materials or right. we yeah so it's so the story is the more important and then you can do a different video about it Mm -hmm. So as far as you have the source, then you can actually yeah. play around with it. And most of our videos is actually interviews and uh, discussions with people. So it's our own videos. So we don't really so much create three videos. Mm -hmm. We create, uh, we rewrite articles on the website. But the videos is like what we are doing now, but we are having it with another like pharmacists or mm -hmm. a doctor or a or 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 a lawyer or or a, like a bank like Almi, we do interviews with their banking people to tell us about loans and about future, about investments. So it's our own. The, the journalist sitting, three cameras, and a, and, and another uh, person to be interviewed. Uh -huh. So uh, how many are you in your team, though? So we are four. We uh -huh. used to be eight. With technology, we are four, and then we are up to 12 people when we have a lot of work to do for mm -hmm. example we have a now a new client that they want to uh, have s this amount of native ads and we have to do this amount of videos mm -hmm. then we hire freelancers for right. example the guy you saw me a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. just before this is like uh, he have another two people on the team and they're a swedish company and we hire them to make right. us material so today we were at our partners and we did some really nice videos and mm -hmm. yeah but mainly you do it yourself basically so uh, yeah, yeah, you're a CEO and a journalist at the same time. And I, I am actually, yeah, I am the CEO. And of course, in any company, small or medium company, the CEO do a lot of things. Mm. And one of my biggest tasks is actually the quality mm -hmm. to ensure that everything is in, in good quality and, and is why we are doing this okay. and make everyone at the team having the mission and vision clear mm -hmm. and of course I communicate with companies and I try to bring money to the company and I ensure that the articles are qualified to be online, the videos, mm -hmm. what we're gonna do in the future, planning the next weeks, next month and next year. But since you have so much engagement, uh, you should be very <laughs> precise on what you're actually giving out there, right? So where, uh, where do you get the exact information because most of the information nowadays in social me social media is fake and mm. how do you get the exact information or how do you ensure that this information is right so first of all we don't go to uh websites that they just have been created like three years ago or mm. two years ago we don't take news so we take news mostly from the swedish agency mm -hmm. for news tete and then we take news from Swedish TV and pretty big newspapers have big names and big historians in Sweden like Sitzvenska, Dagen Nyheter, a little bit of expression when it's come to really good, uh, when they do a lot of analytics articles, mm -hmm. and then we, re we rewrite them. So there are safe areas, and of course sometimes you find the website internationally talking about the news, then we really try to have to know, we wait a little bit. So there is a, here is a one thing about us. People are trying to compete now who get the fastest news. And and when you want to compete with the fastest news, you will fall into having fake news. Mm -hmm. But we wait, actually, and until other people write about it, until we make sure that it's really right, and then we publish. And then when we publish, we have actually trust from our community. What is reading is actually truth. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of different Facebook pages or websites are popping up and they want to do fast news and they always fail into this mistake having mm. fake news. S New York Times, for example, they're always late. Mm -hmm. and they're always late for a reason. They want to get all the facts right. And that's what we do. We want to get all the facts right. Yep. And when you do all the facts right, you have a lot of amount of readers and we will trust you and trust in media is the first value to have. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was my next question about that you should be, you are probably always under pressure because the news is out and you have to translate it to your community and put it out as well. And it's always a very tight schedule for you for every news that is going out. Yeah. So how long usually does it take for you to get, get all the facts and translate it and put it out there? Does it take you a day or does it take so you a week? So we have three people dedicated to this at the okay. office. 
and it doesn't give us a day no it get us uh, we d- we publish daily at least 20 uh, news uh, oh. articles in s- except of videos of course mm-hmm. because we have templates videos we can like create a lot of free writing uh, videos and then the videos are in our own content yes mm-hmm. take times but news they don't take so much time but there are some news we delay in it because we want to make sure that the facts are right mm-hmm. And of course, these three people have been working with me now for three and a half years. All right. So when we started, they are not, they were not that fast as now. But now they are very fast mm. in uh, recreating content. You know, practice, you practice, perfect, practice, right? practice, 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 and they are like, know which news is good, which is news is not valid for our community, which news should be published on our site, which news that our community is looking for. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, come with experience. If you think about it, like every company that was uh, created, they were always looking for a solution, right? For some kind of a problem. And you were starting this company three and a half years ago? or uh, Three years ago. Three years ago. What I was did y- another thing before, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can go, go Me- back to No that. media, all of it in media, but yeah. Hmm? But three years ago. W- what actually pushed you to do s- such thing? So I was working at the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was called Jafra, right? Or yeah that's back that's home okay. but i was working at a company that a swedish company that they did the same work okay. as i am doing now and i was fed up with the way they wanted to work and the way they wanted to work they only wanted to promote positive stories mm. and culture mm-hmm. and then the newspaper was not being picked up and i people uh, didn't get why this newspaper only having positive stories and culture but arabic culture or no no swedish swedish culture culture, okay and we're not getting anything about it Mm -hmm. and then i had like okay i can do it you know and then we started to doing it and then we have a aim and a vision to create a better more inclusive society through media so this is just the first step the second step we want to have more Swedish texts in our news and in our interviews and we want to have people talking in Arabic and Swedish at the same time and understanding each other and debating, mm-hmm. discussing valid issues that will make Sweden a better place. 5.2 million engagements mm. clearly says that th- there are a lot of discussions <laughs> there. There is a, l- there is a very, n- uh, there our community is very hungry actually to discuss things. Mm. I can say this like very confident. Mm. And uh, do you go through all the discussions yourself? Or yeah, I, 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 I do it like it starts to be part of my day. I yeah. want to read and filter all over the team doing it. And we have actually <laughs> other people to filter the comments because sometimes we have hate comments Absolutely. like in any other community. So we actually have two people are outside of the team who are actually our like friends and they also like support this project and they also getting insights about it so mm-hmm. they always filter and read the comments and I go let's say to be realistically I go around 80% of the comments wow yeah that's a lot yeah but at the beginning I thought it was a lot but now it's just like something I do while I'm in the bus while I'm in the train I just go fast and fast and just reading like 300 comments like this and then there is something like bad I tag it to the people and then like to so the team will get that this person has done something they will write to them they will ask him not to do it again uh-huh. and so if the person is that. yeah and then if the person is really like did it again then we ban the person from actually uh-huh. yeah. that, that's how it is and uh, I know like I, I went through your platform but it's on so far I know it's only on Facebook or do you have your own no no we have a website maybe you hmm. didn't know where to click Probably because I was like always yeah. uh, checking so the yeah. Facebook page because yeah. you you still have there like three hundred thousand followers yeah, and yeah, I thought that was the main platform. No, no, yeah, it is the main platform somehow, mm-hmm. but the website also have three hundred thousand readers and mm-hmm. have a lot of values and, uh, and is we it have vertical more or is it your web page? Uh, so Facebook direct to our web page. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Videos in Facebook and articles are in the web page. It's actor that they say. All right, all right. That's and then we have Instagram, we have YouTube yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, th- those parts I knew. Yeah. Interesting. But where you collect data and insights about the people are actually the website. Yeah, and uh, that's the place you ban them or. No social media. There? Social media. Mm-hmm. We d- yeah, but they still can read our news, but we don't l- allow them to comment. 
but in three years, 300,000 followers. It was actually in one and a half year. Wow. Uh, because before when we had to print, mm -hmm. we didn't have much. And then we just stopped printing and focusing in video materials and social media. Mm -hmm. It's uh, fast. Because uh, I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of people who are, uh, me myself included, very interested in growing the blog or growing uh, our channel. What would be uh, advices or suggestions that you could actually get more engagement with people? Sell knowledge more than product. If you have any kind of uh, website, social media, platform, someone want to become an influencer, someone want to have a platform, I would very much recommend that they focus in giving knowledge to the people more than giving engagement on the sake of engagement, for example, like just something that people will hate mm -hmm. or will interact. Maybe they will interact one time and two times, but then they will leave the platform. Yeah. But as much as you provide and build your network by offering knowledge mm -hmm. and free knowledge to the people, I think that will build your uh, personal and social media brand very well. But when you were starting uh, three years ago, you said you built up a 300,000 following platform in one and a half years. Were you actually spending any amount on advertisements or was it just word of mouth and All of our 99% oh, of our engagement are organic. Wow. Mm. So we have 5.2 million engagement are organic. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you this. We have an advertisement sections, right? And the clients come to us, they want to us to advertise. So who get more engagement is the client who make us make more free hands mm -hmm. and sell more knowledge. Okay. As much as you give Facebook and YouTube and Google money, if your product or what are you selling is bad, no, people bad. will not, you will see one million of you, but you will see no comments, maybe three comments. And no purchases either. Yeah. If, if it's a product. Uh, if it's a product or if it's, it's a video, just if you want to. If you have something that people really want and looking for and they are getting the benefits of, it's really super easy to get, not super easy, <laughs> but it's selling knowledge is the, is the, is the key. Mm. And for or you? Or like not selling knowledge, I mean like selling knowledge for free, providing knowledge. Providing knowledge. Yeah, absolutely, I completely agree. One reason why we started this whole thing actually to, to actually give that knowledge to people who doesn't have the opportunity to be around Which us. Which is a really great uh, ah, I think here. so too. And for me personally and uh, Emil here, <laughs> We are getting a lot of knowledge ourselves and getting this personal connection with people that we're interacting with, which is priceless, I believe. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, providing knowledge for free, that, that is a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, how did you come up with opening up an Arabic community since you were working for a Swedish newspapers, right? Because they wanted to open as well for an Arabic community. There we, we were. Oh, they were planning to do. Yeah, it. They, they did it. That's uh -huh. where I was. I was working for their Arabic newspaper. Oh, right, all right. But it didn't work out, and they are closed now. They closed the Arabic version because no one wanted to pick it up. And it's pretty simple. Before I got interviewed to the interview to work with them, I was just actually having an idea why there are no Arabic media in Sweden where it's a second population and an Arabic mm -hmm. speaker. So it's very similar. Why? What did you do differently that they did wrong? We wrote about everything. <laughs> we wrote as a really media platform, not just positive stuff, not just negative stuff. We wrote about everything. Mm -hmm. And then we engaged with the people. We provided the people what they're missing, what they're needing. That's very interesting. And you were actually getting the information from in Swedish newspapers. Because we were uh, like Swedish trust yeah, newspapers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there are other newspapers that provide the yeah already correct yeah, correct yeah information. and people are was much more easier for them to read the news in Arabic and understand it in Arabic and get health information in Arabic and understand Sweden better in Arabic because say you moved here when you are twenty, you learn Swedish, you speak Swedish perfectly, and you studied design. Mm -hmm. So your language will be nine like eighty percent in design. Mm. You switch to health, you might lose like let's say 30% of the knowledge yep. and this 30% are actually essential for you to get the whole idea about why I should not do that for my health. Mm. 
this is why we found we have we, we have a lot of insights about lack of communication in Arabic what mm -hmm. can do for other people mm -hmm. health and future psychology mind loving the place it's there are proving that if you communicate in Arabic people will get you better even if they speak Swedish yeah absolutely I mean if I go somewhere the hospital and someone speaks my own language I would feel a lot more comfortable and you will get the information 100% right to your mind mm, very true and uh, you basically the way you make money on it is uh, advertising companies and clients that are working with you, right? Exactly, and partners. So we mm. do a lot of uh, advertisement, native advertisement, where we tell the people how we can uh, build their brands to the Arabic community and make them trust them. And we don't do just, we are so far, we don't do much about advertisement, advertisement for the Arabic, for like, just put an ad and leave. We try to engage and let you do strategic advertisement. We don't allow casinos to advertise with us. That's a very important thing to say okay. because most of the Swedish medias have casinos. We don't allow casinos. Is it because of religion or is it because? Uh, no, it's not because of religion because we think casinos are crazy to advertise mm. for and they're making uh, one people win and 90% uh, of the people are losing money about this. Mm. And uh, we actually talking about religion. We have our partner, it's the Swedish church and we have the Jewish community uh, breast secretary sitting in our office. Wow. Yeah, uh, and uh, the we work uh, together with all different kind. Of we are not religious at the platform, mm. so we have no religion. And comes when when we communicate, but we don't advertise for casinos. Good. So, uh, what you choose uh, for your clients, or I would put it in a different way, you work with the clients you feel right to work with, right? Rather than just trying to. Make we feel weaving. that they are, yeah, we feel that they are actually making an impact with their advertisement mm -hmm. and they're sustainable and they're not trying to cheat people because our biggest capital is the trust of the people. And mm -hmm. if we lost the trust and we start to sell them bad services, we will have lower uh, viewers, lower uh, engagement, lower trust, then lower business. Mm -hmm. And I think many people forget about that they should if you we're planning this to become all of Europe. Yeah. So we are really basing our whole like so much capital in the trust uh -huh. part. And people don't get like why you're not taking money? Yeah, advertise for the rest restaurant. He will give you fifteen or twenty thousand like this, but he's a bad restaurant. Why should we advertise for him? But like know? as far as I'm concerned, you have pretty big clients. So you're actually open to like small clients as well, like yeah, restaurants. Yeah, we started by small cli clients, and we will not close the door for small clients. But, right. but if, but they have to be good. Even if big clients, we had the big clients like as a casino. I can't mention the name. Wanted mm -hmm. really to badly to advertise with us, but we say no. As simple as that. Yeah, and we have big clients we're working with, and we are very happy about it. And we have big unions as well in Sweden, and soon we're gonna have a big government agency actually advertising with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, is there any other restrictions you have? Like casinos is a straight no. Any other companies that you don't feel like belong so to your community? We try as well much as, uh, uh, unfortunately now restaurants. Yeah. Very hard that restaurant can go through us to uh, advertise. We did first started by advertising for restaurant and we made a lot of money actually mm -hmm. about uh, in it and yeah, as a so capital. But there are this thing off about restaurants. They're not respecting the environment. They're not respecting the quality of the food. They are uh, sometimes they advertise a very nice offer and then they go in the low of the quality of the food and then it's reflect to us badly because mm -hmm. we send these people to this restaurant. And yeah, so so this very small basically. details are yeah. very vital as well. Yeah, so. Restaurants. I don't want to like sound like restaurants and casinos are the same because they're definitely yeah, separate yeah. cases. But very hard that a restaurant can advertise with us. Yeah, it should be definitely a good one then, right? Yeah. If hey, but you never know if it's a good one. But they are. You don't know what they're doing back in the kitchen. You never know where they are bringing their chicken or where they are bringing their. Maybe they are bringing the worst quality chicken that it's really not healthy. Uh huh. Makes sense. So we want. We are a platform about health. Yeah. and sustainability and environment and about making Sweden a better place and 
we know we, uh, we, we sold it for a restaurant that used to sell 20 kilo of meat and now they're selling 120 kilo of meat until now, even when we stopped advertisement for it. And they're like, but do we really want this? Do we really want to carry it more C2O for the environment? Do mm. we really want to make, uh, make money out of this? You know, Actually, so. that was my upcoming question. How do you uh, select the news that you want to share with and you're That's probably based on environment, as you said, and well, uh, other different factors. And use that relevant to our society, and that's actually f what our editorial team. So news people are looking for news. They want to understand what's happening now with the government, mm -hmm. politics. They want to understand what are the new laws. Okay. They want to understand uh, <coughs> business opportunities. They want to get about where are there different events and culture that they can go to. Mm -hmm. They want to know about Swedish artists, films, different like. So the platform new. is open for everything. Yeah, we have uh, seven verticals, I think, and then one vertical is sponsored for health, one vertical is sponsored for, for Swedish news, one vertical focused for law, one vertical focused for society, one vertical called actor guidance, where it's focused to tell people about different events happening in Sweden, and one vertical focused about uh, opinion articles that people can share with us. They want to write an opinion article. Uh, you mentioned uh, news about vertical. W what does that mean? Cause vertical is a vertical, and it's a section in the website where you just like, if you click, it's okay. health. Then you only find about health. Only you click, okay, you different, yeah, okay, vertical. different sections. Yeah. Oh, you call it verticals. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now I know. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And uh, what is the vision towards this whole thing? To build a better, more inclusive society in Sweden. That's it. So you don't think because you mentioned before that you want to do it in whole Europe. But that's uh, the business plan. Yeah, so that's the vision, to yeah. go through the whole Europe and probably world, I don't know. Yeah, Europe, mm. we can say. The vision for Sweden, and it has been always and starting, is to make Swedish people and Arabic people more interactive with each other, mm -hmm. which is going to be the second step when we start to have multi-language conversation, debate and talk, to build better, more inclusive, multicultural society. The vision for Europe? is another different story yeah yeah but uh, still europe is the vision it's uh, in 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 business yes actually yeah. we want to be all over europe we want to do the repeat the same things we're doing here and localize the nation mm -hmm. and make people are like hi but you know there is a vision for denmark a vision for germany a vision if we are taking it but to vision for the whole of europe is a big thing mm. so uh, we had a uh, a guest uh, in our second episode, Magnus, and he was actually talking about expanding. And do you share with him the same uh, way he thinks that other people who try to expand work, which is you choose your closest country to expand? So for Sweden, it would be Norway. Are you thinking to, whenever you're going to plan to expand, are you thinking to go to Norway and do the exact thing? Because usually it's a mistake, I believe. And as Magnus mentioned, because Norway is not Sweden and they have completely different understandings of very many different things. So basically, are you planning to go to Norway, let's say, and be there for a year, understand how the business works there and then start it? Or you just want to implement the same thing you did in Sweden there? Yeah, I uh, totally agree with him. Mm? Uh, no, not like this, no. Uh, so here is the thing. So the Arabic diaspora in Norway or in Denmark or in Germany, more or less are their families sharing across same people, same culture. So you know how their mentality. But then you need to know the s Norwegian system or the Danish system yep. or the German system. But for us, we are actually thinking to go where are the most need for our mm -hmm. platform. And the most need for our platform now is Denmark and Germany. Okay. You know, there are, there are big need. Mm -hmm. Norway, there are not that much big need as much as in like in Denmark and, and Germany. Yeah, Norway was just an example. Because yeah. So we are thinking to go to Denmark. We already, we are so close to Denmark, but we already know about the Danish mm -hmm. uh, population, the Arabic population in Denmark and the laws and the mentality. And we said now we have been discussing actually for a year now mm -hmm. with big factors in Denmark. They are having the newspapers. We went there, we sat with them, we're talking, we're brainstorming, they came to us. We're getting to know mm -hmm. if we went there, where, how should we, we lunch? Mm -hmm. And that's very important to know. You need Absolutely. to also as well uh, 
a network and connection to start there. Absolutely. So we have built a very big, nice network in Denmark that we even have 4,500 users now from Denmark, Already? for example. Yeah, that they want to know more about Sweden. And then Germany, of course, you need to know more. Where are you going to? Where are you starting? What are their needs? But if you think about it, like overall in whole Europe, I I'm sure you made your uh, research as well. Uh, Sweden stands uh, first place with having the most Arabs in the community? No, or? no, it's Germany. It's Germany. Yeah. So why don't you just go straight to Germany after, uh, rather than Denmark? So still the policy of being close neighbor country works, right? In, it in is like somewhere actually, under the mindset. It is actually true what you're thinking, but it's also much more easier for us to take sh Denmark than taking Germany first. Okay. Because Denmark is smaller. The market yeah, is Yeah, and it's just right. across the bridge and we already built the network and then we can just take in it and then when we go to Germany, we're much more stronger mm -hmm. than going to Germany, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's a very big market and then we only have Sweden, but if you have two countries and then go to a big country, then you can actually, you will have like a bigger uh, chances to take over actually Germany. But if you want to, the reality in France is the biggest Arabic community. Wow. Yeah. There are not much needers in Germany and in Denmark. Uh -huh. And France, there are already big media channels like 20 Fira France. They have a big Arabic TV there and they have like already there is, is, yeah. a, is another system. Yeah, Don't I think wanted to ask you about yeah. this, like uh, competitors there are already, right? Yeah, yeah. And what about Denmark? No competitors or maybe there are, but not working as well. Yeah, there are not real competitors in Denmark. But you never know who's going to have a lot of money and start to want to do the same thing we are doing. Uh -huh. But that's the thing. It's like, what are you providing? How is your trust? We're very confident about us, actually, and about what we are delivering. Because we had competitors that they tried to do what we are doing exactly, and they failed here in Sweden. Okay. Yeah. And like they got even money from funders and donors more than us. We never got any investors or a government agency. And they closed. They spent the money and they closed. <laughs> In one year, we really? don't see them anymore. Oh. So yeah. they became a little bit annoying and then they disappear. <laughs> annoying to you, right? Yeah. Scratching yeah, your... Exactly. Yeah. Make us a little bit more and do more and... Yeah, but that's life. Always there will be competition. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Denmark, if you actually open up there, are you going to have a team there working as well for you? Or are you going to be sitting there yourself since it's going to be a venture, right? It's going to be completely new and you have to implement your knowledge and experience towards it. So as much as possible, we would like to have our team in Malmo with the new technology and the way that you buy news and do different things are can be all in-house in one place and you can actually be all over the world. Mm. Uh, but for sales and relation, uh, for sales and communication and building a network, of course, they're going to be a team in Denmark. But for media production, recreating news, the team, we think to just expand in Malmo and just more technology and more website and more outsourcing and people, people, it's a whole different way now to have a media platform. It's not like before you need a journalist to go and make an article with Stephen Levin. You can be in Malmo and buy the whole journalist interviews for Stephen Levin and make the question and then it's going to come to you and then you re-edit them and then you publish them. Mm. That's ex actually very interesting because uh, considering where technology is going, where the news uh, platform is going. It's already go went so far away now. There is a platform that provides you news, videos, materials, exactly. but not like the old platforms like, uh, what is it called, Reuters, you know. Mm -hmm. There are now different than Reuters. There are something called Watch It. Mm -hmm. You basically have an account and then you have an account for like a lot of journalists are uploading like Shutterstock, but for journalism. Mm -hmm. But when you have an account, you can download whatever you want. So in France, there is a strike. Okay. Then you will find footage of demonstration. You will find interviews with people in the street. You will find the press conference for the Minister of Foreign Affairs talking about the strike. You will find everything, but you just have to download them and recreate them and put a voiceover and send it to the people live without you even have a one single person in front. Oh. Uh, they are expensive platform, but they're really good platform. And since they open, there are there is an, a platform in the US, don't call Watch It, call another thing. Mm -hmm. Since they open, they close 60 publishers. 
Yeah. Oh. So there are platforms that are, are, are g- making really great places for you to have a smaller team and make v- still good news outlets. But through your experience, and uh, if you think about it, let's say 10 to 15 years ago, newspapers were provided by papers, literally papers. Mm. Now it's web pages and whatever platform there is. So where do you think it's heading? What's the next step? What's the next level? And are you prepared for the next boom of news? It's already happening, the next boom in yeah, news. And people what is want to, people now are selectively news what they're going to read. Mm. So they will only see news that they actually chose and click for it. Yeah. yeah, and we are into that and actually now. Okay. So there will, of course, be no newspaper printed, no. you know. And uh, the you will automatically do the, your algorithm to be actually specified of what you want to watch or what you want to read, and then it will de- be delivered to you by an app or a mail or whatever. But there will be a system that you will only see this. Mm. Yes, and they're already like physical. Yeah, there is yeah. An already an app for that called Omni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there are very many. It's different. gonna develop this ten different times, and it's it's going very uh, somewhere very nice, mm-hmm. I think. But do you think that's gonna be the finish line? I mean, before it was papers, and you had to read or go to the page that you wanna that you're interested in. Now there there was web pages. A- again, they have these buttons where you wanna read, and now you actually have to choose, and they will provide you only those news. What's, what do you think is the next step towards even simplifying it more for people? It's so actually, if you would be in a, charge of a, all this at wh- a conference, and they were talking about it, that it will we will start to watch the news with the glasses, like virtual reality. So you actually want to see the news. You don't have to open your phone or an app. You just put the glasses, and then you are watching the news actually live, or or like seeing it as in a, in a virtual reality thing, and then like you take it off, and then you so you can out of the news. Happening. That's one part of it, but where the news and how can I formulate where it's heading? There are plenty of theories and things that are easily to see online, but I don't know what's going to happen sooner or later. But I think, yeah, we're already seeing in news 360, right? Mm. Even on Facebook, when you're scrolling in a video, you can see news. You can see different now. You can be at that environment there where it's happening so you can actually feel and read the news and understand it 360 degrees not just like watching it from one side that so you can see you shoot who shut the shot and who was yeah. behind it and everything and you can actually see yeah it. yeah and it's going virtual reality or like with a headset what is the next step for Akhtar though? Mm, to virtual. have this multi-language platform where we can actually communicate in two languages at the same time and understanding each other at the same time. That's what is the next step like that. Have you ever thought about uh, doing it in other languages as well? Because there are a lot of Russian people, right, as well? Yeah. And you already have this kind of a uh, reputation of engaging so many people in their own community. Have you ever thought about opening up and keeping and yourself not in Russian, open? but in Persian and Turkish? Yeah. Have you thought about it? Yeah. Are you planning to do anything? No, we're not planning, but we're researching actually how many people and different stuff because it can be interesting. Yeah, it could be very interesting because it would actually give you an access to a lot more people Mm -hmm. and a lot more diverse cultures. That's nice. Uh, We have a family here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Is your family Swedish or you guys came from? Syria back home? No, my uh, partner is from Denmark. Mm. We moved here together and I have my mother. Mm. Uh, she's a teacher assistant in Lund. I have my brother here mm. in Stockholm. Just get a position now with the UNHCR about the law and protection, something with refugees that I am so far away at the moment. Yeah, mm. so and I have a very a lot of nice of <laughs> nice friends here in Sweden. And do you visit home quite often? No. I go to Lebanon, not Lebanon. to Syria. No. No. I Syria is too dangerous, or uh, don't know if it's now dangerous or not. But I don't have anything to do there now. Mm-hmm. Why should I go? I mean, your whole family is here, right? Now. Yeah, yeah. not just uh, here. Here, world. Germany, Denmark, uh, Canada. Mm. <laughs> now, some of them. Yeah. Was it tough in the start moving? Actually, not really. No. No. 
okay <laughs> that was oh. a simple answer yeah no not really because yeah. i think it was uh yeah I, <laughs> i mean what is tough about sweden except the weather <laughs> very, <You know>? true. <laughs> very true i still complain about it now yeah. that used to it. only that i think it's tough and if you have a yeah no no it was not that tough no mm. Uh, actually, back to uh, news questions. Uh, how is it, how important is diversity in sources that you get the news from? Diversity of people actually giving you those news, because I believe like it's always different, and there are different point of views, right, on anyone who provides those news, because you can see it in completely different way, and the person who's from Sweden or from anywhere else can see it in their own way. So how important it is to get the information from diverse cultures who are providing those news it is actually very important it is, but right? now we're not talking about actor we are talking about people creating content in mm. sweden for other newspapers and for other yeah, but you have you do have those sources as you said right so yeah. where you get that information so uh do you have those chosen sources for yeah so the most uh, trusted sources we take from and we try to be diverse but i think also like you said something now about diversity of the news it's very important because mm. if you just depend on one journalist to provide you this only one news somehow as much as the journalist professional it will be only linked to his perspective somehow exactly. you know so diversity is very important like diversity in any company like diversity in any business mm. like diversity in any board member diversity to have much more different opinions background experience knowledge etc yeah uh, i absolutely agree and uh, actually one one question i had more because i'm very interested in this section uh if you have 10 sources right with giving you 10 different opinions how do you come with the conclusion of the source that you want to provide your community with so Facts, we always provision. that's the job of our chief editor mm -hmm. but the rule is always ask yourself why before publishing okay so we have this rule mm -hmm why i am publishing this news and the answer has to be because it will help people navigate something or understand something better mm. or less their confusion if if the answer was to get more engagement mm -hmm. then no if the answer was will we help these people if we rewrite this content mm -hmm. will we actually provide our community a new information that they didn't know about will we less a frustration that they so that they didn't get there is a new law and a lot of frustration if we wrote this new law will we help them in understanding something mm -hmm. if the answer is yes then publish if the answer is no then don't publish very simple as that and we have reached this after two years of working it's not just something that we learned about and that as simple as that why we are publishing this news i mean i, I mean your profession it's news it's always something coming up all the time yeah exactly and so then when you put the why then you are actually whipped out 50 percent of the news and then when you get the answer you whipped out maybe 75 percent of the news and then you only had the valuable news is the answer is gonna help people gonna make people navigate gonna give people a better identity gonna guide people gonna make people more knowledgeable and always it has to be about our end user the reader and the information that you provide it's only what's based in Sweden or do you provide information that's what's going on back home for example no for only about only Sweden, Sweden and Europe okay no no that's only things are linked about Sweden so it's a Swedish media platform that speaks yeah. in Arabic okay sounds good <laughs> yeah, yeah we had a really really nice conversation yeah uh, I'm happy to do it yeah absolutely and we've been like trying to do it for a while now yeah finally we did and uh, we would like to actually promote the platform and uh, yeah, so where can they find you? And so it's in social media, it's Akhtar. It's like Akta in Swedish, but with two R. So it's A-K-T-A-R-R -R and Akhtar.se, which is mean more. So it's more news, more knowledge, more information, more insights about the Arabic community, where we are having now a section where people actually, and researcher or business people, want to know more about the Arabic community, informations, so they will able to read articles in English and Swedish about the Arabic community in Sweden. So actor actually means more. 
Mm. I didn't know that yeah. in Arabic. Oh, great. We, we will definitely have every information under yeah. our uh, under link and we'll try to promote it every day with short cuts on our page and that will be really nice. Yeah. Thank you Kadala for having Thank you. For, for I'm very happy time. that I got uh, this opportunity. Thank you very much guys. It's episode number five. We're gonna have the full interview next Friday, I believe. And see you next Friday. Adios guys.